Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, along with my beautiful wife, Janet, and our producer, Lindsay, and we are streaming live from the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Studio. Today, you don't want to miss out, we have John Prescott on. He is a pharmacist and he specializes in um, nutritional supplements and supplementation and vitamins and all that good stuff. We are specifically going to focus today on cardiovascular disease and what supplements and foods are important to prevent and treat cardiovascular disease. So cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of Americans and it has been for many years. And even though we've had prescription drugs that have been out there to help lower cholesterol and we're going to talk about those things um for 30 plus years now it's still a number one killer of americans so john welcome to our show thank you sean janet thank you very much for having me appreciate it yeah so john you've got a little bit of a personal story when it comes to cardiovascular disease so can you share your story a little bit yes i can i had a pharmacy just like you guys have i had a pharmacy prex shot professional pharmacy Peoria, Illinois. And when I was uh, 40 years old, I, they decided I needed to have aortic valve replacement. So they replaced that with a plastic valve. And I did very well with that plastic valve, although I had to go on an anticoagulant warfarin, Coumadin. And then about uh, 10 or 12 years later, they developed, they determined an aneurysm was growing next to that valve. And so they had to go in once again and address that and, and do some surgical uh, uh, improving on that. And then they put me on a few more uh, cardiovascular drugs. I don't have a lot of them, but I, there are products that I have to take on a regular basis. I don't have uh, since for 30 years. So I'm, I'm used to taking products. I'm used to having uh, issues from time to time with products. And I'm also very used to using uh, uh, natural products and, and things like that because they're very helpful. And um so we've, I've kind of got an agreement with my physician that if I can show him some good information on a natural product, that we're going to use that. And uh, so it's, it's more, that's where we're going now. That's where I'm at at this phase of my life is using both natural products, integrating them, I guess, as an integrative cardiology, using integrative natural products with the uh, pharmaceutical products. So how is it being a pharmacist on the other side when you're actually a patient and taking these medications that... You know, we talk to patients about all the time and side effects and, and all that. How is that? Well, you know, that the first time I had to go into a Walgreens store and get my prescriptions filled, that was a, that was a real awakening for me because in my life, Walgreens is one of my biggest competitors in Peoria, Illinois, but I'm not in Peoria anymore. And I sold my pharmacy. And while I still have a tremendous interest in nutraceuticals and things like that, to go in there and get my prescriptions filled was, a, but it, they're, they're good guys. And so they're, uh, been the, the store here in Frisco, Colorado. So yeah, I. Uh, it, but it was an awakening, Sean. It really was going into yeah. a Walgreens store and being just like John Q. Public. So yeah, for sure, for sure. So well, I'm excited for you to help uh, educate our listeners and viewers about um, integrative um, cardiovascular supplements and and how we can help um, help improve their health and and work their way to optimal health. So Janet, do you have any questions to start off with for John? Well, John, I I'm just super excited to to, to dig in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it back at him. I I this is a, a subject I'm very passionate about. So I just I want to get you going on on the topic. So go ahead, John. Okay. Well, you know the one of the things you run into, one of the issues that I think we run into, is that we use natural products in so many different ways. I mean, the public is is crying out for these things during COVID. Natural products increase in, in, in sales tremendously as people were reaching out for that. Yet physicians don't seem to prescribe or recommend these products very often. They, they tend to stick with the conventional pharmaceutical agents that they do. Um, I think that there's part of that reason is that they are used to using, you know, double blind placebo controlled studies, which you guys are aware of. And they, and usually the cardiovascular pharmaceutical drugs that the physicians are used to using are like a single entity. There are something that's an ACE inhibitor. There's something that's an antihypertensive. There's something for cardiac arrhythmia, which this is what they're comfortable with. But I don't think that's the best thing overall myself personally, because 
you know, you wind up with a lot of confusion. You guys see that with your patients that people have a whole polypharmacy directed toward cardiovascular drugs. Uh, gets to be quite expensive, you know, to be able to maintain that. Um, some of these heart products, products prescriptions have issues. They have product problems. Uh, the statin drugs, and we got get into that later on about some of the side effects and the adverse uh, things that they have. But I think the bottom line of all of this, and we talked a little bit about this beforehand, Sean, was that heart cardiovascular disease, heart disease is an acquired disease. And so this is something most people aren't born with. They just, it develops over time. And that looking at a more complete picture of the entire patient is a better way to address cardiovascular disease than just a, a pill for your ill. You know, now you're going to take this, now you're going to take that. So, and I think as pharmacists, that's where we step up, you guys and, and, and myself, to step up and try to get patients more informed about what could be helpful for them. So let's go back on the single entity drug that you were talking about. So you talked about lovastatin. And mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and educate our listeners and viewers about where lovastatin comes from. It comes from red yeast rice. And red yeast rice has been um, used for years to support cardiovascular health. And lovastatin was actually isolated from it. So talk about the difference between a natural product like red yeast rice and a single entity drug like lovastatin where you can have, you know, more side effects um, versus the, the red yeast rice. Can you go ahead and comment on that, John? Sure. And that's a very good place to get started here, Sean, because when the statin drugs came out, and I don't know if it was like in 1980s or something like that, when they first came out, they'd been around a long time. And they, because they were marketed so heavily to physicians, there was the, the inducement that everybody should be on a statin drug. And they found out very quickly as they started doing that, that number one, not everybody should be on a statin drug. Statin drugs are over prescribed, leading to a lot of problems for a lot of individuals. But that red yeast rice, which is a natural monocalum, which is the natural version of uh, the, the prescription drug lovastatin, that that has a pretty good uh, effect on lowering cholesterol as well. Now, when you get a high dosage of that, a very high dosage of that, that you can have some of the same problems that you see with statins. But the key to using red yeast rice is to know what the dosage is, making sure that you have a quality product and that you have somebody that knows, like yourselves, there to help your, uh, your patients and the people that are interested in these products at your pharmacy there. So that's, you know, the big difference is the, on the one side, it's a prescription. It has some side effects to it. The lovastatin does, the prescription product. Red yeast rice is a little lighter on that. Plus, the red yeast rice has some other ingredients that work together with uh, the lovastatin to help lower cholesterol and lower lipids. Well, I, I think that's one of the dilemmas in modern day medicine, modern, modern day pharmaceuticals is, is the pharmaceutical companies find a plant that works for a disease state, i.e. lowering cholesterol, and they try to find one active ingredient in that plant. When in reality, just like you said, there's probably multiple ingredients in that plant that work synergistically, work together with that, with uh, the ingredients to help, um, you know, lower the cholesterol without the side effects. And you see that pretty much in all of the products that are out there for integrative cardiology, that they're not only integrative that to be used with pharmaceutical agents, but they have integrative courses of action that they do when you once you start taking them, which are not found with the prescription products. So actually you are getting a little bit, maybe a little bit more metabolically complete approach when you use something like a natural product. Well, there is um, sometimes nutrient depletion that happens along with pharmaceutical medications and especially with our statins. Um, and so a lot of the um, integrative approach replaces that along with, and most of our pharmaceuticals do not put, for example, CoQ10 in with their prescription, but that is certainly a nutrient that becomes depleted over time. And so a lot of the products that I see that have red yeast rice will include that in their product as well. Absolutely correct on that one, Janet. And what's interesting is that before they brought out lovastatin, 
Merck Sharp and Dome had a version of that product that had coenzyme Q10 included wow. with it. And they, they actually knew this in advance before they brought it to market. And I don't know what their justifications were, but they left it out. They left coenzyme 10 which is a very essential uh, nutrient for heart health and to bring to have a product that lowers lipids, but it lowers your coenzyme Q10 as well. That's not much help. And so it's up to pharmacists to be recommending to their patients, yes, if you're going to take that statin drug, you better be taking coenzyme Q10 because it has an important role in your body, particularly in heart health. So you're Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Th thanks for that, John. So while we're on the topic of cholesterol, what about bergamot? Tell us about bergamot. Bergamot is a very interesting product. It's just, it's relatively new in a marketplace. It comes uniquely from this little section in the Calabrian region of Southern Italy. And it has a very unique profile in the, in the flavonoids in the juice. And I'm going to, I'm going to refer to a, a, a study here. I've got it sitting here because I want to get all the numbers right. But the one thing that we're looking for when physicians are looking for when they're talking about prescribing a drug or recommending a drug is I, they want to see a double-blinded placebo-controlled study. And so they did one on this product and the bergamot taken at the appropriate dosage, which is 1,000 milligrams daily for 30 days, it comes in a 500 milligram capsule. So you take two capsules daily for 30 days. It reduced total cholesterol by 30%. It lowered triglycerides by 40%. It reduced low-dose lipoproteins by 38%. And it increased the HDL, the healthy lipids that we all try to get through exercise and things like that, by 42%. And it also lowered blood glucose by 15 to 25%. So it's kind of like this product, one single product took care of everything. and you're seeing more and more bergamot out there in the marketplace. It's not available from every company yet, but it is a, just a fantastic um, option to use. And I'm taking it myself, uh, the bergamot. It's one of the things that I had my discussion with my doctor and, and uh, because we, you know, we talk about these products. Some of these products can, in, can increase your risk of becoming diabetic. That's another thing. Janet talked about the drug-induced nutrient depletions the coenzyme Q10 and that type of thing. But the issue with some of these, like the, the statin drugs, they, in, they increase your risk of becoming diabetic. And diabetic, diabetes is a major comorbidity for a lot of you know, problems in our, in our health. So when you've got something that actually lowers lipids and lowers blood glucose, boy, that's a real keeper. And I don't know of any, I don't know of any pharmaceutical option that does that. Not, I'm not a one. No. And, you know, let's face it, um, a big risk for, for uh, cardiovascular disease is being diabetic. In fact, I don't know this for sure, but I'm just trying to think rationally. But I would think that um, being diabetic is a bigger risk for cardiovascular disease than having high cholesterol. So, you know, for a statin to increase blood glucose, which could cause diabetes, um, doesn't make a lot of sense if we're trying to prescribe that drug to lower cholesterol, to lower cardiovascular risk. And that's how I got introduced to it because I was, my blood glucose was going up and I, you know, as a pharmacist, we don't always do what we're supposed to do. You guys know that, but I was really trying to, to knock this down and I, my blood glucose kept going up and up and up. And I was just right under di being a diabetic. And I said, you know, this doesn't make any sense. So we, my doctor and I did a little research, and, and he so this last time I saw him, uh, we just went to bergamot, and we went to berberine, and we cut that statin dose down to a fraction of what I was taking before in an attempt to try to drop this down because that's a diabetes. You're right. Diabetes is not it, – it's, it's a much more serious situation than having high lipids. So you, you really don't want to be taking something that's going to drive you into diabetes. No. So tell us about berberine. You miss you mentioned berberine. Tell us about berberine. Berberine, and, and this one's been around a little bit longer. And you know, we seem to be finding all of these things here, uh, you know, in the last few years. But it's a natural alkaloid, and it's found in various various plants, and you can find it in di different places in the world. Um, it lowers your lipids. This is what's interesting. 
lowers your lipids similar to the effects that are seen in statins. So you got what this product will lower those, your lipids. And people will use it to get their lipids down. It also can increase your glycemic control similar to a product known as metformin. And you guys wow. yeah. are uh, familiar with yeah. that. So you've got something that's going to knock your lipids down like a prescription drug, drop your blood glucose like metformin. This is this, and they've got research and studies that show this. So you can use this product, one single product in metabolic disease. You can use it in diabetes. You can use it in obesity, hypertension, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So it, it's interesting that, that this thing is really, berberine is really, really catching on. It also uh, reduces the risk of blood clots and stroke. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it's got a lot of, of great uses. You just need to make sure you've got a good product when you're using this and that you take the, the proper dosage, which for this product is 500 milligrams two to three times a day. But it can be taken, like I said, it's one of the products that I'm taking personally, and I'm, I'm taking less statin and more berberine and bergamot, and it seems to be going very well. That's an interesting point because I never thought about metformin because metformin is not tolerated very well by many patients just because of the irritation it can cause. So that's wonderful mm -hmm. to hear that because, you know, if you have a diabetic or even like we see it being used in our clients with PCOS with their uh, hormonal imbalance, um, certainly this could be very beneficial for them too. So that's good to hear. Yeah, it's interesting that we as pharmacists kind of look at these, you know, if you were going to go to a physician with the, with the patient issues you just mentioned, they're going to say, well, here's your drug I'm going to prescribe for this, and here's your drug I'm going to prescribe for that, and here's your, and the public needs to know we don't, we don't make, we don't get our money by filling a lot of prescriptions for prescription medications. I think it's the, the benefit we provide as pharmacists is being able to look at a product and say, well, you know, you can't take metformin. Let's try berberine. Let's give that one a, a shot and be surprised at the fact that, yes, it's managing your lipids and it's managing your blood sugar. So um, I think I think there's a lot of benefit in these products. Yeah, that's a definitely a big bonus. And, and you're right, John. As pharmacists, this is mine and Janet's goal, and I think your goal as well, is that yes. we want to educate consumers. And we want to educate and empower consumers that they are in charge of their own health. So where are they going to get the information if they don't get it from us as a pharmacist, at least not good information necessarily. So thank you for being on today and educating um, our listeners and viewers. So let's talk about omega threes. Okay. Go ahead. Omega three fatty acids. This is probably one of the ones that has been accepted. You know, when you talk about, you know, because a lot of doctors are saying, well, yeah, take a fish oil, take a fish oil product. That's omega-3 is the most popular form of omega-3s are fish oil capsules. And they are called essential fatty acids because they are needed by the body but cannot be made by the body. So if you see something that's an omega-3 essential fatty acid or a fish oil capsule, this is all one and the same. So we want to, anybody listening to this, we want to, you guys know that, I know that. But just so the people listening in and they say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't have omega-3 fat, essential fatty acids. I have fish oil capsules. No, you do. And the they're the same thing. And the these essential fatty acids, the fish oil capsules, they lower cholesterol, minimizing your risk of uh, coronary heart disease. They lower overall inflammation. And I know if you do that, you guys talk about inflammation all the time. And how do I get my and, and Fish oil capsules are one of the foundational products that you can use to lower bodily inflammation. They lower blood pressure. Uh, they make the blood less sticky, so it's less likely to clot. And here's one, as I mentioned earlier, I take an anticoagulant because of my heart valve. And so for me, fish oil is not indicated. So it's probably the one thing you have to watch because they don't want your, they don't want patients to have sticky blood. That's why we take low dose aspirin and we take things like that. And for the people that have normal vasculature, fish oil is perfect. But if you are somebody that's on a prescription anticoagulant like I am, fish oil, I used to take it, but I kind of had to get off of that one because it just, it was getting my, my blood too thin and you can be, you can be too thin on that. But um, no, it's an excellent product, excellent foundational product. 
And when I had my pharmacy, I recommended it a lot. Uh, the only downside, I think, is you got to use quality product. You really do need to use quality product, and you have to take enough of the product. It's uh, one um, you know questionable fish oil a day isn't going to get you the benefit. And I know you guys know that, and you'll advise your your patients as to what's appropriate and what's a good quality product to use. If it smells like fish and tastes like fish, it's probably not a good product. No, <laughs> no. and as I always, I like to throw this story in because it, it my our patients, you know, can understand this. We had an Airedale Terrier that had extreme skin issues, and that was one of the things that our vet prescribed was for him to take um, the omegas and the fatty acids. And if I gave Scruffy a cheap one. He didn't even eat it. I mean, he was massive. Like he was 135 pounds. So, you know, if a dog's rejecting that, <laughs> that big, that that wasn't a good product. So we just threw that one away. But yes, you do need to have a good one because, you know, otherwise they can smell terrible and they can taste terrible. And the burping is, is not very comfortable either. And the other thing that I tell my clients too is that if you get too much you might have some loose stools and so you need to back off and slowly adjust for that because that can be kind of one of those you know deciding factors whether somebody even wants to take it or not so go slow yeah, yeah. or split or split the dose up do right. the one go dose slow in the morning one dose it in the evening yeah. here's what I find interesting John when we're talking about lobostatin and red yeast rice the you know, pharmaceutical manufacturers found out that red yeast rice was working for lowering cholesterol, so they tried to develop a product out of it, um, i.e. Mevacor, Lobostatin. Right. They did the same thing with fish oils. If you remember, in yes. the late 90s, early 2000s, I can't remember, and I can't, and I can't remember the drug name off the top of my head, but, you know, for years, John, we were told as pharmacists that were recommending fish oils, you know, the the traditional medical system was like foo foo them. It's like, Oh no, they're, they're junk. They're garbage. They don't work. You know, you're just wasting your money. Yet then fast forward a few years later, the pharmaceutical companies patent part of it and realize that it's working. Um, so they patent it and they charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month for a brand name prescription drug. Um, yet it doesn't have there again, it's a single entity ingredient. It doesn't have all the ingredients that, you know, the essential fatty acids or all the omega-3 should have. They, mm -hmm. they, they standardize it to a single, a single product, right? Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely right. I can't remember it either. We, we maybe need some cognitive enhancers there, Sean, but I don't <laughs> remember when it came out though. And you're right. And I it was like, you got to be kidding me. You know, this thing is, is tremendously expensive and maybe you can use a drug card to pay for it, but it's just that cost that they, the manufacturers came out for, was not justified. And, you know, but you're right. All of a sudden it had credibility because big pharma said that it had credibility and, and pharmacists had been recommending this for recommending quality essential fatty acids to their patients for a long time. Yeah, correct. Correct. We, cause, cause we knew it worked. Right. Janet, what other questions do you have for John on cardiovascular supplements? Well, I, I think we just touched on it because we've had this in other other uh, podcasts, but I think it's really important that people understand how inflammation plays in the role of cholesterol. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, inflammation plays a significant factor in overall health, period. Anything you see nowadays, if you're on the functional medicine train and you're, you're trying to get people straightened out, inflammation really is is a big thing and, and it's inf gut inflammation, cardiovascular inflammation. And so minimizing inflammation, you know, is, is probably the overall thing. You know, when you start looking at, like you said, cardiovascular disease, yes, inflammation inflames the vascular set, uh, vessels, you know, it creates a lot of issues in there, but in addressing that inflammation itself and how you would counsel people to do that by diet or supplements or however you want to do that is going to have a big uh, purpose in their overall health. So, so let's back up. I forgot to ask you when I talk about a quality product of omega threes. Talk about EPA and DHA. Oh, okay, yeah. When you look, it's a very good question, Sean, because when you look at a, an essential fatty acid product or a fish oil product, it has EPA 
and in uh, DHA. It has these two ingredients in the product. And, uh, it, you know, the, normally it's in a, qu a quantity of about 300 to 400 milligrams per capsule. And so you have EPA and DHA in these fish oil capsules. These capsules do need to be molecularly distilled. You need to make sure that you've got all the, the toxins and, and heavy metals out of your product because these are obtained from fish. And fish are swimming in a very toxic environment nowadays. And so you need to be looking at um, the level of EPA and DHA that are in these products. I, I, in my pharmacy, I had people that were going to some of the big box stores, the very, you know, and they were getting, you know, a bottle of a thousand EPA or a bottle of a thousand fish oil capsules. And they'd say, is this a good product? They would bring it into me. And you really couldn't tell how much EPA or DHA was even mm -hmm. in. You know, it's, you know what? Where did they get this stuff from? You know, so it's something that uh, somebody like yourself and, and Janet can, you know, invite your invite your patients, people on the call here. Do I have a quality EPA or DHA product? Do I have what it takes to be able to truly benefit? You know, and, and when they did the studies, this was another reason I think that physicians said, "Well, fish oil doesn't work. Fish oil really doesn't work." Well, it does work when you use about 2,400 to 3,600 milligrams a day, which is four to six capsules. So the idea that, yeah, we give a, a patient one capsule and they're not seeing the benefit, but you give people the a quality product, 2,400 milligrams to 3,600 milligrams a day, four to six capsules, and you will see the results that you want to see because they use that, they've used it in, in depression, but you think, well, how does fish oil help with depression? It gets, it lowers inflammation. And when you lower inflammation, you not only get better cardiovascular, you know, profile, but you get a better profile in a lot of other areas too, including some of the, like, in, like depression and things like that. Well, and, you know, they're essential fatty acids and they, every cell in the body really needs omega-3s. So Agreed. there's a lot of things omega-3s can do. And you're right. It depends on dose. Are you know, what is your goal? If your goal is to lower cholesterol, it might be a higher dose than if you're just looking to, you know, for overall good, um, good health. You know, you mm -hmm. might get away with one or two capsules, but if you're trying to lower cholesterol, you might need a higher dose. So it's important as a, us as pharmacists educate our patients on that. Definitely. And I gotta definitely. Tell you, yeah, I got to tell you a story about big box capsules of fish oil. So we have some in our pharmacy and because um, we'll have patients tested every once in a while and we had our one of our pharmacists do that once where she bit in she bit into the big box capsule fish oil and uh -huh. almost vomited and the fish oil that we were using she could tolerate it now it was still fish i mean there was no doubt about sure. it. it was still fish but at least it wasn't rancid fish and that's the important <laughs> right no i don't know if you, you, got want, it. I don't you, you want to comment you, on that at all yeah. Well, and that's the thing, you know, you can get away with that. Uh, supposedly, if you put and I, I have counseled people, some people have a real sensitivity to fish oil. And so I've told them, OK, either get an enteric coated product, one that has a, a special coating around it. Or if you put the fish oil capsule in the freezer and let it freeze before you take it, then that releases it lower down in your gastrointestinal tract. So now you, you you kind of eliminate that burping and that nausea vomiting thing, but start off with good stuff. I mean, don't yep. you know? Don't park it in the freezer just because it's cheap. And now you got that's the only way you can get it down. Start off with the good stuff so you know how much you're getting per day in your in your doses. And another tip is too is you know don't drink hot coffee with your fish oil or hot tea with your fish oil. Don't drink hot drinks because obviously it's going to dissolve faster, and that could give you more of a tendency to burp it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, John, what else would you like to add to our podcast today when it comes to cardiovascular health and, and supplementation? Well, real quickly, I might talk a little bit about arginine. Only Please. Arginine is a product that helps to release the, the vessels. It, gets, it improves the blood flow in the body. Uh, it, nitric oxide is a, it actually controls the vessels that we have in our body. And when you use arginine as a supplement, usually arginine and citrulline together as a daily supplement, it improves 
the vascular size. You get more blood flowing through there, more oxygen flowing through there. You can result in greater stamina. Uh, gets rid of uh, sometimes gets rid of chest pain, this type of thing. And so that is something that it's not new, but it's yeah. You know, when you're talking about well, do I want to use that prescription drug or not? I do have people that do very well on arginine and arginine and citrulline, taking their nitric oxide, expanding their vessels, lowering their blood pressure, increasing their stamina. That all comes, and it just comes from ingesting the amino acid arginine, which we don't do as much as we get older. So this whole thing, it, it they even use it for erectile dysfunction. So uh, it, it helps with that because it's all blood flow. And once you get used to increasing your blood flow through Uh, a nitric oxide enhancer like arginine and citrulline, yeah, it does a lot of benefits for you. Yeah, it's essentially a vasodilator. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, John. So as we wrap up, uh, what do you have a passion for? What drives you? (laughs) Uh, Well, it it, it does. You know, when I had my pharmacy, we were the non-pharmacy pharmacy. We that sounds even, like us. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, that's just it. You know, we, we were the non-pharmacy pharmacy of Central Illinois. We did we carried no big pharma products. We did compounding. We made individual products for individual needs, and we carried supplements. And we did not carry. You couldn't buy any birth control pills, uh, di, di, anything that was prescription because we had none of that. We just filled prescriptions for compounding. So if you're doing that, good luck to you because I that worked very well for me. Yeah, yeah, no, it works very well for us. And we we, we typically tell patients, it's like, uh, yeah, Jen and I are pharmacists, and we don't believe in most pharmaceuticals to treat most long-term disease. Now, right. there's exceptions to that rule, but I think, honestly, John, it's very powerful coming from two pharmacists saying that. Um, I'm not saying that pharmaceuticals do not have a place in our lives, because they absolutely do. But when disease can be treated with um, diet, lifestyle changes, um, and possibly supplementation, I think you're a lot better off than if you have to take a a prescription pharmaceutical product. I agree 100%. That's what we did and loved every day of it. And Yeah, that's that's us too. And that's why you're still doing it because you still love it. That's right. Yep. All right, John, if anybody has any questions, how do people get a hold of you? Well, they can get a hold of me at uh, my email address is jprekshot.com. Uh, at wellnessworks.com. That is the nutritional company that I now get to direct. Uh, I still work with pharmacists like yourself all the time. Jay Preckshot at wellnessworks.com or uh, they can go to the Wellnessworks website and there's a, a link there that can get to me as well. Awesome, John. Thank you for being on so much. I think you achieved our goal of educating and empowering consumers to take charge of their own health. So, John, thanks a lot for being on. Well, you just keep that goal, Sean. It was a pleasure being with you. All right. You've been listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Tune in Thursday uh, for our podcast, 8 to 9 a.m. Producer, who do you have on Thursday? I got to check it out. I should know that. I checked it out (laughs) this morning, but I forgot. Uh, Who do we have on? Oh yeah, oh on oh yeah, Dr. Uh, Ross Carter. Uh, we were going to be talking about continuous glucose monitoring, so you do not want to miss that. There's a lot of information circulating about that when it comes to keto and when it comes to checking your glucoses and how important continuous glucose monitoring is. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, stay tuned, eight to nine a.m. Thursday. John, thanks for being on. Thank you. You you've been listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you. 